Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the Collective of Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome cross watchers. And for those of you who are brand new to the channel, happy you landed here. Uh, don't hesitate, come into the comments, say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Later on this evening, I will come back through, review the comments and give you a proper welcome. So um, I'm gonna pull from Healing Waters Oracle. This deck is newer to me. It is beautiful. And so I'm using it and I'll tell you why in a second. Let me get a card to activate this reading for you. Let's see what we get. For Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. The Sweet Waters. Sensuality, romance, enjoyment, fertility, and balance. Ooh, my goodness, the sweet waters. Sounds about right. I love it. Um, yeah, so there's something very natural here, very, very almost divine feminine, right? Empress energy in this card, sensuality, romance, enjoyment, fertility, and balance. We got some Venus working for you. Lovely energy, lovely message. So... Uh, we are, uh, we kicked off the month of September. I did do the monthly energy update for the month of September, where I take the month week by week. If you missed it, certainly not too late to go watch that. Um, and I also did the new moon for September. Both those readings are for the collective of all signs. And that new moon was on the first, like the second of September, second or third, depending on where you live. And so um, we sort of kick off the month with a new moon. And even though it wasn't an eclipse, it sort of began eclipse season since it um, concludes with a full moon in Pisces, which is a lunar eclipse. So I got the Healing Waters deck because that full moon in Pisces with the lunar eclipse, which is a south node eclipse, is going to be powerful because the south node is about um, our karma right what we need to release from the past past lives if you subscribe to the notion of that um, and if not certainly past wounds past energies things that need to be dredged back up and released in order to be finally healed so that's the scheme here where i'm doing the um soul contract spread that is my little kitten that you see <laughs> flashing around here he's got the zoomies his name is leo even though he's a gemini and so um, my apologies if he's distracting for you i'm kind of numb to it anyway um i'm gonna pull the spread and it looks like an abbreviated um celtic cross but i'll tell you the meanings of the positions and then we'll get the clarifiers here we go nature of your karmic soul contract is about the fool so it's it can be about assessing the risks or taking leaps of faith your main lesson here four of swords almost everybody's getting this yeah there's some healing here with po possibly with regard to um taking chances in the past where you sort of leapt before you looked right it's a look before you leap kind of a situation where there's some healing needed around that um oops <laughs> what you're already aware of um devil energy is talking maybe about some uh fear egoic fear and resistance some negative karma that you're aware of um perhaps with regard to um having taken chances that you didn't really assess the risks from and you have um, uh, gotten yourself into a jam and you still have some healing to do around that in the shadow work that's still needed strength yeah regaining some confidence around that um, understanding that you can kind of uh, tap back into the strength the courage and the confidence that you need to overcome uh, the obstacles from getting knocked down in the past. Uh, I like this because this is some past healing that you've already accomplished. So whatever it was that happened, you had a new beginning. Um, and that's evidence that, you know, well, okay, 
I took a chance. Maybe I didn't do my due diligence and I kind of got knocked on my ass here. I need to sort of focus on that in this soul contract. That's why I'm here to heal. I'm aware of something that, you know, I, I tend to maybe attract some toxicity or some negative karma, be, karma because I don't, I sort of take unnecessary risks, okay? Um, I also have some shadow work to do about my confidence level or overcoming those obstacles, getting, you know, my feet beneath me again. And, but in the past, you do have evidence that you kind of can begin again. So in the, uh, the final step on your healing journey, yeah, I like this. Um, the, this, this is what the signal will be that you're either ready to cut a cord and release the contract or step up to the next phase of the soul contract is the queen of wands. And that's where you get your power back. Yes, cancer. I like it. Ten of Pentacles on the bottom. So that's looking to the future and um, uh, the abundance and, you know, potentially life partnership, but it doesn't have to be that necessarily. I'm looking at your soul contract here with someone who you might have taken some unnecessary risks and it's like touching the iron. You only have to do that once, right? And there's some healing that's involved around that. That's the major lesson. So let's see. Seven of Cups, Page of Swords, the Moon. Lots of confusion, um, probably very emotionally overwhelming, especially if you're here as the Cancerian, though not necessarily. Um, Page of Swords, it's like you're looking for clues to sort of sort things out. Um, the Moon underneath, fears, insecurities, apprehension. Uh, yeah, this healing process is the important lesson for this soul contract. And I feel as if you're kind of completely flummoxed. Um, and so, you know, with the Page of Swords, you're, you're really on a search for some clues. You're sort of flying blind. And it's just dredging up a lot of emotion, uh, lots of confusion. There may be just many, many options. And if you keep sort of acting um, in the moment on the fly on impulse and you're not sort of getting any closer, it sort of heightens your reactivity and it gets you further away from your ability to kind of calm your mind. Sometimes the Four of Swords is just about that. So possibly part of your um, lesson in the soul contract that's really important is just to kind of go to ground. Sometimes the four of swords isn't just about a healing situation. It's about like bring it all down, right? Park the, the, park the drama, park the emotional intensity because we have the seven of cups, <sighs> right? And then replay the game tape. Because the Four of Swords to me is also very similar to Mercury retrograde, which we're finally out of, right? We, I mean, Mercury went direct, I want to say on the 28th of August, but still had to go back over all of the territory he had reversed over. But now we're finally free and clear of that. So this card, often for me as a reader, has a lot of the themes of the re of the retrograde. Review, reevaluate, you know, um, rest, recover, re regenerate, renew, um, reframe, rethink, realign. So there's something here with this Four of Swords that if you kind of kind of quiet your mind and start reevaluating and rethinking and reviewing, it might get you closer to the answer you're looking for that will start to help make sense of things. I often call the seven of cups, seven cups of crazy because it's, it, and then we kind of get, right? We get further away from the clarity we need. And if we have the fool here is, you know, we take the next leap and the next leap and the next leap and we're not getting any closer to understanding what it is we're meant to learn in this situation, in this soul contract. And it makes us less and less and less secure. So that's what I think I'm looking at in this soul contract. What you are already aware of.
So the nature of your soul contract, what I'm trying to say, is kind of impulsive and risky and chancy, requiring lots of leaps of faith, and you keep kind of getting smacked down. Hmm. What you're already aware of, we have the Six of Wands sitting on that devil, Hermit, and then the Six of Cups. You may have some fears here about reconciling with this person. And so uh, I'm just, remember, it's a general reading, not a private reading. So you kind of have to take it as it resonates for you. I do offer private readings and there's always a link below that will take you to the booking page. So let me just say that. But I'm feeling like this devil energy is more coming from your fear. Since we already have the moon and I'm already sensing the overwhelm and the confusion in your soul, uh, soul contract with this person. And this is what you're aware of. There's a potential for reconciling, for kind of meeting in the middle and forming a compromise of some sort. But your fear is not wanting you to do that. Your fear is saying, I don't know. I don't know if I can trust the situation. I'm, I'm not feeling like, like your ego is kind of trying to keep you small and then off the grid you go. Hermit is sort of your little disappearing act. Um, whether it's I'm busy or I need, I need alone time, right? Especially if you're the Cancerian and I know it's stereotypical, but Cancerians often operate that way as well. This is Virgo energy, which can be a little bit unto themselves and Cancerians have the tendency when the emotions run high to kind of retreat. So that's why I'm saying that underneath we have the six of cups. So even though you may be seeing this person um, as somebody that you should trust, somebody that you could feel comfortable with and should feel comfortable with and might want to sort of have this momentous moment where you you know, sort of forge that alliance and that compromise and something you negotiate and you see it as a victory and a triumph and, you know, some kind of a reconciliation of some sort, that devil energy, look how big it is, right? It's, it seems all powerful, like it has control over you to some degree. And so that disappearing act, that sort of, yeah, I don't know, I feel like I need some time to myself is what comes through. So you're already aware of that. Um, in the shadow work that needs to be done, if you want a new beginning, you're gonna have to choose it, right? The lover's card in this connection, and that's gonna require you to take the first step and so the strength card is about the confidence that I discussed when I first laid the card down. So I have that right. This is where your shadow work is, which is about overcoming these fears. The only card in the deck, in the whole tarot deck, that overcomes the devil is the strength card. So if you already know that your fears and your ego is, right, is... Um, overriding something that you know you should be able to easily accomplish but you're kind of dodging it and finding ways to kind of you know retreat and avoid this isn't this is your shadow work your mission if you choose to accept it is to focus on gathering up your strength your courage and your confidence to overcome that tendency because this is what's available to you. New beginning, chosen of your own free will, and an inner awareness that you need to take it one small step at a time. And you know you've done it before because you have the receipts. There's your Ace of Pentacles. So you already have some past healing accomplishments that led to a new beginning somewhere in your life. So it doesn't necessarily have to be in this connection. So you might need to go in the way back machine and think about that.
Right, where you trusted your intuition after some form of a loss, where you sort of um, ran with your gut, so to speak, and also Queen of Swords, where you didn't operate from your emotional body, where you operated from, boy, this is very similar to all the readings I've already done, per, per, uh, mostly Taurus and Gemini, had very similar energies come through. Different days, different decks, different signs, but similar message of trusting your intuition, um, that inner knowing that, yeah, I got to kind of think my way through this. Um, and normally, I'm the girl that tells you, you can't think your way through, you got to feel your way through. But in your case, since hyper emotionality is getting in the way um, for you, this Queen of Swords was your friend because she's level headed, she's practical, pragmatic, just the facts, let's just straight shooter, truth seeker, truth teller, checks the emotional stuff at the door. And that's the way you can kind of negotiate the fears, the, the, you know, the disappointments and, and operate from intuition and then the clear communication to come out with, you know, a big win. So you've already had this proof, evidence in the past somewhere in your life that you know, you, you can negotiate some form of healing that you come through it with a positive outcome. So that has already happened. And now <laughs> um, you will, the final step on the healing journey in this soul contract that signals you're ready to either cut the cord with this contract or step up to the next phase of this soul contract, we have the Queen of Wands. Three of Wands, Nine of Pentacles, and the world. Right, because Queen of Wands is sort of that sense. It's like when the Strength card overcomes the Devil, the result is the Queen of Wands. The, the Queen of Wands sort of says, I know who I am. I know my gifts. Um, I'm also aware uh, of my... Uh, feminine and you can be a man there's like your feminine side that is used for good right where you're not it's not like it becomes an albatross where it becomes part of your problem it becomes part of your strength and it's also how you know that you set those intentions and then what it is that you're setting intentions for the action steps you take what it is you desire begins to arrive. So that three of wands is sort of a manifestation card, if you will, the ships coming in card. Um, so, and it's, it's a healing journey, yes, but this is showing me some power. The wands are about desire and achievement and things that you want. And then we have the nine of pentacles. So how does all this happen? By you being able to operate from a sense of independence and autonomy. So there needs to be more individuation, even within the soul contract. So you don't want to over identify with your person, right? Because that's more of an enmeshment. You don't want the enmeshment because that may be where things have gotten a little mucked up. Um, so underneath we have the world, which is telling you that this is Saturn. Job well done. Lesson learned. Cycle complete. Thank you. Next. So it'll be up to you whether you cut, cut the cord or whether you step up to the next level of your soul contract. But I see that as both options are possible, I don't feel the devil is someone else. I feel it is your fear. And I feel in your shadow work, you can absolutely overcome that fear. Okay? That's what I have. So I'm definitely going to go through this, give you the astrology, and I'm going into the extended and looking at, you know, getting into your person's point of view, their perception of you, their feelings for you, their intentions toward you. Um, what do they get from you? Like, what are they receiving from you? What's their buy-in, you know? Um, what's the physical fulfillment level? And if there isn't, if you're at too far a distance, like what's the chemistry? And um, where is the connection headed? 
That's what we're going to look at in the extended, and the links to that are below. I said links plural because there are three different options, so please make sure you look at option one, two, and three to be sure you know which access point you want for the extended. And so before I give you the astrology, if you enjoy these readings, if you get something out of it, if you like my style, my crazy cat, whatever it is, and you have not yet done so, please do subscribe below. And that um, allows me to stay here and do what it is I love to do most in the world, which is what I'm called to do. And that is to serve you and bring you these messages to, um, yeah, to shine some light on some dim subjects. That's what I do. Here we go. The Fool is the planet Uranus, which is like the Great Awakener. Expect the unexpected. Anything can happen and probably will. It rules the sign of Aquarius. Then we have the Page, which is a Page of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and the Moon is Pisces. Up here we have the Devil is Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. We have uh, the Hermit is Virgo. Down here we have... Uh, the strength card is Leo. We have the lovers is Gemini. Page of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Gemini. Uh, High Priestess is the moon, which actually rules uh, the sign of Cancer. Queen of Swords is Libra. Queen of Wands is Aries. Uh, Nine of Pentacles, more Virgo. We're in Vir Virgo season, so all of that is very appropriate. And then the world card is saturn which rules aquarius used to rule aquarius but rules capricorn that's what i have for you i love that you have uh the sweet waters sensuality romance enjoyment fertility and balance and i'm heading to the extended i'll see you there in a second bye for now